Hi Copic fans! Welcome to Copic in the Craft Room. My name is Michelle and today we're going to be looking at a kind of a series that Colleen started for us about shading and using light in your images. What we're going to do today is look at the four basic shapes. There are four shapes that actually make up everything that we color. Now, it doesn't mean that there's texture and line that we want to show on those items and there doesn't mean that there's always rules that can be broken. But almost everything is one of these four basic shapes. So we're going to take a closer look at just the basic shape. And then in the months to come, I'll show you how those shapes can be adjusted to really make some amazing changes in your shading and light source usage in your own stamps. So grab a couple markers and maybe even a multi-liner today. And come join me. Learn something about those four basic shapes. I'm jumping right in and drawing my four basic shapes on my cardstock. I start with a sphere, which is that ball-like shape, nice and round, and I'm going to shade that in a few minutes. Next is a cylinder. I start with two elliptical shapes, top and bottom of our tube or can-like shape, and then I connect that with two straight lines that run from the edges of those ellipses. Now normally I wouldn't see the back line of that bottom ellipse. That's the back edge of my can or tube. But because I'm drawing with a multi-liner, I am going to see it during this tutorial. Next is a cone. Again, I start with an ellipse, but this time it's going to come up and narrow to a point very similar shading to the cylinder. Again, on that ellipse, we wouldn't see the back edge. It's sitting behind at the back of the cone, but because we're drawing with a multi-liner, you will be able to see it. Lastly is a cube, and that's a square or a box. It starts with that front square shape. Then I'm going to draw three lines back from three of the corners. There are three diagonal lines and then I'm going to cut my cube off with the back edges. The three diagonal lines are pretty close to parallel, but if I continue them out to a point, eventually they converge to that point. The vertical line is exactly parallel, however, in the front and the back of the cube. The horizontal line at the top and the back of the cube are also parallel. That's going to close off that cube and make it look like a cube. So here's all four shapes and now we're going to shade them. I am going to start with a B series. I've got B63, 66, and 69, which my camera's not refocusing. There we go. I'm going to use that on my sphere. I'm going to say my light is coming in from the left. just to give myself a light source. And what I'm going to show you real quick with my lightest color, and we look, you looked at this in the first lesson on the series, but that light is going to come in and hit on that side. But remember, it's a three-dimensional shape. So it doesn't just hit in a stripe. It hits in a round shape like the shape itself. The mid-tone is going to come in Again, with that curve, look at how those edges curve. That's because that ball is curving around in all directions. And then the shadows, or the deepest shades, again, are going to come in and around because it's folding back in all directions. This is the point closest to us. This is the point that's going to get that light first, but everything is falling away from that point of light. So we've got to shade it as if it was falling away. So I'm going to start with my lightest color, which in this case is a B63, and I'm going to go ahead and fill that sphere up with a nice even coat. Next comes my mid-tone. In this case, I'm using a B66, and I'm going to use a flicking motion. It's going to come up and around that edge. Lastly, I'm going to come in with my darkest color, 
In this case, it's a B69 and add my deepest shade down in those shadowed areas. So you can see the start of this. Um, I'm gonna come back in and blend it, but I've got my highlight, my midtone, and my shade, or my shadow, in my deepest shade. But you can see how it's falling away from that light source, and that light source is hitting in that ball-like shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend those together. So hopefully what you're seeing is a rounded ball. I did go very dark with this image. I did not leave a white highlight, but hopefully you can see that rounded shape. Um, here is one that I did considerably lighter. Exact same um, concept. The next shape that I drew was a cylinder. We're gonna do this one just to entertain ourselves since we have so many color options. We're gonna go ahead and use a YR color series. I've got a 04, 07, and 09 this time. So on the outer edge, we'll say my light source is still coming in from that left side. On the outer edge, it's gonna hit that left side and work its way around the shape. So the highlight's gonna hit on that far left side. The mid-tone is gonna come across the front, the part closest to the viewer. And then the shadow is gonna fall away from the light source, that side that is the furthest away. Now it's gonna hit in a long band. It's not gonna hit in curves because it's a long, those edges are flat even though they're bending around. That's a straight up and down shape that's going around. Now the inside is actually gonna go in the opposite direction because that light source comes in and hits on that far side if this is hollow because it's catching the light as it comes across and hits that opposite side. So my highlight will actually come in on this right side and then the deepest shadows will happen over to the left. So we're gonna start with our highlight color which is that 04 in this case. Midtone coming in, YR07 is the next one. And I'm gonna come from the left and move across to the right. And now for my darkest shade, YR09. I think I'm actually going to add an R in here so you guys can see this even more accentuated. This is an R27. There we go. That makes me a little happier. I'm going to do the same effect on the inside, but remember it's going to be reversed if that shape is hollow. And here you have a can or a cylinder. If we enclose that top side, obviously ignore this bottom line. If we enclosed or put a lid on the cylinder, my light would be over near my light source. The light would hit over here and get darker again away from the light source. But you can see hopefully how this kind of rolls around the front, how that creates that dip inside that can and hopefully you can ignore that line. But that is the effect of a cylinder. The next is a cone. 
Very similar shading to a cylinder, but a little different with a little variety. We're gonna go ahead and do some R's. I've got an R22, an R27, and an R29 for this one. I'm gonna start with my R22. And what's gonna happen on this guy is again, let's say, let's go opposite. Light source from the right this time. So it's gonna come in and hit this right edge, but because of the shape of the cone, it's gonna hit in a similar shape. So I'm gonna actually have kind of a wedge-like highlight from tip to base. The mid-tone, again, more of a wedge-like shape. It's following the shape of the item. And then that deepest shadowed area will be furthest away and again, kind of in a cone-like shape. I'm gonna start with my R22. R27 is next. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna to go to R24. That's gonna be a better, better jump. So R24. And onto my deepest shade in those shadow areas, R29, of course. And even without blending this at all, you can see how that's curving around to the front. We'll do a little bit of blending. Not a whole lot needed on this one. All right, there we've got a cone coming out and around up to that point. Gives you a really good idea for shading there. Lastly, we have a cube. And a cube is unique in that we don't have anything round. All three of these other shapes have rounded sides in some form, whether it's the cylinder that's wrapping around in a tube-like shape, or the cone that, again, still has a round base, and so it's wrapping around that shape. The sphere is entirely round in all directions, but a cube is not. It is a boxy, flat-sided shape. So, it gets simplified to the extreme, and we can add some artistic license. So I'm gonna say, once again, or for this one again, that my light source is actually coming in from my right hand side this time. And then the side, from the viewer's perspective, that's not getting light is this front side. Now, if we think about it too hard, the side that really isn't getting light is the side we can't see, this one tucked away from that light source, or it's underneath. So my darkest areas are sides that we can't see. But we're using a little artistic license here. We're trying to show the viewer what we want them to see. And so we're gonna go ahead and add that darkest side to the side that's away, the most away from the light. So, light, mid-tone, shadow, according to our light source. We're telling the viewer where that light is hitting. Now, all of these, can be more complicated. We are gonna continue with this. We are gonna make it more complicated, more advanced, and put it on those images that you're using day to day so you can see how this applies. All right, so you have to keep coming back and see the rest of this series. We'll keep hitting it. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you get out there and get colorful.